Hello, my name is Cliff Hancock and I'm a research biomechanics engineer at Soldier Center within the U.S. Army Combat Capabilities Development Command. And I want to thank you for your interest in our poster titled, The Development of Quantitative Performance Metrics for Squads Entering and Clearing a Room, which in the U.S. Army is known as Battle Drill 6. I apologize that I was not able to attend in person, but I hope you learn enough from this video but if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at the email listed on the bottom of the poster. The purpose of our research was to utilize motion capture instrumentation within a shoot house to supplement observer controller observations with quantitative performance metrics and to determine if these metrics statistically differentiated between squads. We had 15 U.S. Army squads from the 101st and 82nd Airborne, the 25th and 4th Infantry Divisions, and the 10th Mountain Divisions. All in all, we had 120 male soldier volunteers participate. Each squad completed the shoot house once per day over three days for a total of three trials for each squad. The shoot house consisted of a hallway with three adjoining rooms. All doors were closed but not locked. Each room was well lit and did not contain any furniture. One of the three rooms contained an armed combatant whose position within the room was randomized depending upon the trial. This room was the focus of the analysis of the work presented on this poster, but other analyses were performed on the other two rooms. Every squad member's weapon and the armed combatant's weapon were loaded with simunition rounds that fired relatively low velocity projectiles that left chalk marks upon impact. Simunition rounds were selected over blanks in order to elicit a more realistic response and room clearing approach from the squad. Qualys's active trackers, pictured under step one of the processing and analysis pipeline section, were attached to each soldier's back, helmet, and weapon using 3D printed mounts. These devices allowed us to perform six degree of freedom tracking on each individual using overhead motion capture cameras mounted to the rafters. Data analysis was performed between, between door opening and 20 seconds after door opening to standardize the analysis duration for every squad. If we look at the images along the right-hand side of the poster during this duration, the squad stack of soldiers that were positioned along the wall leading up to the door flow into the room, clearing each corner, each soldier typically turning the opposite direction upon entering the room. The soldiers scan their sectors, engage the enemy combatant, and come to a stop at their points of domination. Although the active trackers mostly auto-labeled the markers in real time, any manual gap filling and labeling was performed on the data post data collection. I put together custom MATLAB scripts to visualize positions, rotations, and estimated weapon aim points, which is shown in the three images of section three of the processing and analysis pipeline section. As you see, the shoot house walls and floors are colored gray, the fatal funnels near the doorways are colored a pinkish red, and the door is colored a faint blue. Body armor, helmet, and weapon models were added for better and easier visualization. Red line segments extending from each weapon tip show the estimated weapon aim points. Custom MATLAB scripts calculated many performance metrics using this motion capture data, but here are some examples. A. Room scan rate. This metric used the estimated weapon aim points to determine the rate of room scanning. Before the door is opened, room scan percentage is 0%. As weapon aim points start traveling across the walls of the room, more of the walls get scanned, increasing the percentage. Once multiple soldiers enter the room, you now have multiple weapon aim points contacting the walls, increasing this percentage even more rapidly. The room scan percentage increased until it plateaued or hit 100%. If it hit 100%, that implies that the squad scanned every inch of every interior wall within the room. By taking the average scan rate between door opening and the start of this plateau, we get the metric room scan rate. B. Duration in the fatal funnel. This metric uses the torso active tracker to determine when each soldier is within the red fatal funnel zone near the doorway. Squads that moved quickly through the fatal funnel had lower total durations in the fatal funnel. C. Duration until on target. This metric uses the weapon aim points to determine how long it took the first soldier to get his weapon aim point onto the torso or head model of the enemy combatant. D. Hugging wall distance. 
This metric uses the torso active tracker to determine the distance each soldier is away from the nearest wall at every instance in time. We then calculate an average distance over time and average across all soldiers who entered the room. Squads who stayed along the peripheries of the room had lower hugging wall distances. E, distance between squad members. Time series arrays of distance between each soldier were calculated for everyone in the squad using the torso active tracker. Average separation distances between squad members were taken at key points, such as when the soldiers were in the stack at time zero and when the soldiers were crossing through the doorway. F, speed of squad members. So this is very similar to the previous metric. Time series arrays of speeds of every soldier were determined using the torso active tracker. Average movement speeds were examined at similar key points within the exercise. G, weapon, pitch, yaw, and roll. This metric used the active tracker mounted to the weapon. Average 3D rotations were again calculated at key points within the exercise. We wanted to answer questions like, what was the weapon pitch of each soldier upon crossing through the doorway? Or in other words, was the weapon up and ready upon entering? Or was it facing towards the floor? H, duration of weapon flagging. Since we could estimate weapon aim points, we could determine how long the weapon aim points intersected fellow squad members throughout the duration of the exercise. Ideally, weapon flagging duration remained close to zero. After calculating all of these metrics and more, we used IBM's SPSS to calculate ANOVAs to test the main effects of squad and trial for each metric. And we also completed simple linear regressions between our performance metrics and the observer controller scores. As an important note, observer controllers have viewed each squad's room clearing real time and also reviewed replay footage before scoring the squads in a number of performance categories. Now on to the results. We had many metrics that significantly varied across squads, which is what we hoped to see. For instance, as shown by the bar graphs, room scan rate, duration in the fatal funnel, and hugging wall distance were three examples of this. Several metrics also show statistically significant correlations with many of the performance categories. The plotted examples show duration in the fatal funnel versus the squad simplicity score. Observer controllers rated squads who followed doctrine and flowed relatively smoothly into the room, taking the paths of least resistance as having a high simplicity score. So, as shown by the plot, as simplicity score was rated higher, durations in the fatal funnel tended to decrease. This means that squads who moved into and out of the fatal funnel quicker tended to score higher in simplicity. While this is just one example, there were several other performance metrics that correlated with observer controller scores that are not shown on the poster. In conclusion, we successfully identified performance metrics that can differentiate between squads of varying proficiencies, and we've seen some significant correlations with observer controller ratings. While the data collection and analysis process were time-consuming and labor-intensive, we hope to one day make an after-action review tool that soldiers can use with minimal effort that outputs these performance metrics and provides a simple-to-understand scoring system. Such a system would likely provide valuable and actionable feedback that would allow a squad to enhance their room clearing training, improving their training efficiency and efficacy. Again, I want to thank you so much for listening to the presentation. I wish I could have been there to talk with you in person, but again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at the email at the bottom of the poster. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your conference.